On this episode, we draw a single star. Hey! <laughs> but then we draw more stars and think of how to randomize the coordinates of the stars. Ah! The results are radical. Whoa! But eventually, we'll get beautiful, beautiful star effect. Mm, hi, everybody. Welcome to LazyDesk Academy. Welcome to uh, our little shmup tutorial. I am Christian and uh, we are, um, yeah, we're making a little shmup. Have you seen this? Load shmup. As always, there's going to be a little um, uh, a download link for, for the current version of the game. We have a bunch of stuff in here. Right, we made some UI last time around. Maybe you were in the doggy zone. Maybe you added some more UI to this. This is great. Uh, I'm not actually gonna add my own bump display here, um, uh, uh, but I am gonna. We have to concentrate on some big, 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 big things that we're gonna do today. I'm gonna remove those print statements while I'm talking. Today we are going to do arrays or so-called lists. Yes, that's right. This is going to be one of the most important, powerful tools that you uh, that 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 stands in our way to make you know multiple bullets or uh, multiple enemies. You know, this is something that uh, together with the four next loop, we had to learn about the four next loop, uh, will allow us to create a crazy amount of objects at the same time on the screen. Because right now you saw this, right? You saw this. Every time we create an object, every time we create something, we have to create two new variables. And it's like, wow, this is, this is, we would like, we cannot create everything by hand, right? We have to, we have to, um, we have to automate things. And already we had a bit of a glimpse of that with the for next loop. And we're going to expand our ability to manage a great amount of, of things on the screen at any given time with the array. And maybe the best way to do the array is, um, again, <laughs> we're not doing the bullets quite yet. I would love to do a star-filled sky, like this, the, the, the stars in the background, because we are flying through space. But the screen is right now is really, really like just black. There's nothing like, okay, space maybe, <laughs> space is black right but you, you we should see some stars scrolling like it's it belongs to, to this this fantasy of a of what a shmup is right so let's do the stars let's do a star background now i'm gonna do also something crazy something new i will actually write my own function for the first time i mean we had draw we have we had update we have in it but i want us to get also comfortable with the idea that sometimes you have a function that does something and you wrote this function yourself. Okay? It's not going to be difficult. We already did it before in episode two. We're just going to go function and we're going to call this star field. Star field is the, is the name for this, right? The star field? Oh, I don't know. English language, man. Open and close parentheses. And, right? I wrote this after all of the other functions all, uh, all on the back here. Actually, something we can do um, up here, there's tabs. You can use the tabs as well. Let's create a new tab. Let's just click, um, pr press on, on the plus here. Bam! And it creates a new tab. <gasps> and now we can switch between the two tabs. Because like scrolling up and down is always so, so tedious, right? And so we can take the star field function. Bam! We're going to put it in the new tab where it disappeared because uh, empty tabs automatically disappeared. Um, so right, and right now we put the star field in this new tab. And this is not like with a like with a Chrome browser or like generally browsers, right? Where you have tabs and it opens a completely new different website in this new tab or something. No, th all these tabs are part of the same program. Don't worry. It's not like we create we have multiple programs open at the same time. Everything, uh, all the tabs at the end when you run it will get merged into into one big program. It's just a way for us to kind of like have to organize things in a way that we can just click on a tab and jump to uh, to some something else, right? Uh, I don't know if it makes sense to put a star field in its own tab, but we're gonna uh, talk about this function today a lot. So I wanna, I just gonna put it in a tab for now. A lot of new things today. Don't worry, it's gonna be fine. All right, so star field. We create a new uh, function star field. What are we going to do with this? We are going to call our own function. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, so here in draw function, after we clear the screen, 
you know, this is a function call, right? CLS, it's a function call. SPR is a function call. That's where we draw the ship. We're going to wedge ourselves in between there. After we clear the screen, we're going to go Starfield. We're going to actually call our own function Starfield. Now, Pico 8 doesn't give us the courtesy of turning our Starfield green. I don't like that. I think it would have been nice if, if there was maybe like a special color for your own function. Uh, it just stays gray. So you always have to make sure that it's spelled exactly how your own function is spelled. But yeah, Starfield, open, close parentheses, exactly the same thing as, you know, you have with, uh, with the green functions that come with Pico 8. Uh, but now it's your own function that you created yourself. Great. There's nothing inside that function. It does nothing. So when you run this, it's like exactly the same. But hey, it exists, right? Um, yeah, good. What are we going to, we're going to draw stars, right? We, that's what we want to do. Well, um, there is a way of doing this. We're going to just go, go P set, set. That um, sets a pixel, uh, that, that changes the color of a single pixel. So we're going to go set, P set, 10, 10. That's the coordinate of the pixel. And then seven. And then we're going to make a white star at the coordinate 10, 10. Bam, there it is. <laughs> Our first star done. Hey, we want to have more stars. We, we, we're going to need more stars. <laughs> That's not enough stars. <laughs> okay. Um, so you might see already where this is going. We uh, had the, if, the for next loop, right? Like, let's just do for next loop. Hey. That, that, that's where, where it was for. So we're going to go for, again, i. We can just repeat the i variable. We can just use the i variable for multiple things because as we said, the i variable exists only for the for next loop in which it was created. So it kind of like disappears afterwards. So we can use, uh, create a new variable called i for a different loop. That's fine. And we're going to do it a piece that in, in inside the loop. Now we're drawing four stars all on the same spot, <laughs> not what you wanted. So how are we going to spread them around a little bit? I mean, you could do something like 10 times I. Uh, okay. And, and then vertically, I guess maybe also I. Uh, uh, more stars? Oh, okay. Um, that, that's, that doesn't look like stars, man. Okay, we're gonna have to uh, learn a lot of new things today. Uh, something I want to show to you is uh, you can have a random number. I'm going to actually put a random number in, in the score. So there's a random number generator uh, and that's a function. And we kind of already had this a function that returns a value. Uh, that function is called RND. Open close parentheses. You can see it turns green and we take the, 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 the function and the function does something blah, 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 and it uh, executes, returns a value. And we're going to take whatever the value is being returned and we're going to put it in a variable. So the, the, the function doesn't do something on the screen, doesn't draw a rectangle or anything. It's, it's whatever it does is invisible, but the result of it, like there's a, there's a calculation happening and the result of the calculation is something we can manipulate kind of the same way we manipulate a variable. So for example, you could also, you know, do some math with it as well, which is crazy, but yeah, you can do that. Var functions sometimes return value. And we had that already. We had that. This is not, not necessarily unfamiliar. You know what it, if statement where if we had like BTN, if BTN zero, right? yeah. that was also kind of like a function standing in a position where there should be a value, there should be true or false, where that's kind of like the same thing. We can, we think we can have a function that returns a value. Okay. Let's just run this, see what's happening. Okay. We have score equals 0 0.558. Okay, run this again, different number, 0 0.7353. Oh, and then run again, different number, 0 0.115. So every time you call R&D, it will return a different number. That number is a number between zero and one. <laughs> you would think like, wow, there's not a lot of numbers there. But I, that actually involves comma numbers. So as you can see, it's always like a, a zero point uh, something something. 
Uh, and an important thing is that it's never actually one. It cannot actually never reaches actually one. It's zero point something always. Okay. So how is this useful? Well, something you can actually also do. That's also a cool trick here. In the parentheses, I mean, you can do a lot of things here too with this random number. This is this is this is a bit of a Pandora's box. Um, in the parentheses, you can uh, specify some number. For example, one hundred twenty-eight. And now, when we run this, it will actually return a number between 0 and 128, or whatever we have in here. That's nice. That's nice. That's something that we want. Because we want to maybe randomize the coordinates of the stars. Ah, okay. So now you can see uh, it, it returns wild numbers that are, you know, anywhere like, you know, 38, uh, 113 it never uh, actually reaches uh, 128 that's the width of the screen or the height of the screen that's good uh, there are comma values you see like the, the you know 113 comma 4878 can we kind of shave off the thing behind the comma we absolutely can obviously again there's a new function for this and that function is called flr floor we can floor a number uh, which means basically means rounding a number, but always going down. That's why floor, you know. Um, so we can, you have floor. Let me let me get this random number for uh, out for a while so you can see how this works. We can put the floor inside the score. We can go floor zero point five, right? It takes whatever number is in the parentheses, and it just re removes <laughs> strips off the point point number. So it's going to be zero. You have 45.1, it's going to be 45. You have uh, 3,000.9999999999999. Why are you doing this to me, Pico8? <laughs> Too many nines. It, uh, Pico8 rounded it up already automatically before I could floor it. Let's just go 3,099. Okay, now it's <laughs> Correctly stripped out the net. I always demonstrate something that breaks. Too many nines. Still works. Okay. Right. So it's uh, the floor function removes the things behind the comma. And so what we can do now, and that's going to be crazy, we're going to put a function inside a function call. So we're going to put the random number, um, uh, a random number between 0 and 128 that includes comma numbers. Uh, we're going to put this inside the parentheses of the floor function. Bam! Now we're getting uh, integer numbers between 0 and 128. Wow! So function within a function. Cool, 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 cool. All right, let's get this this little thing out. Let's get this out. Let's get put it out there. Let's just, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to put the, uh, the 100,000 back in here again. Let's get this out and let's put this in our star field. Can we do this? Can we just put this like here? Bam, put it in a random position. That, that should be no problem. And, and then we're gonna put it here. Again, under position, it's a bit, it starts to get a bit crowded here. So we setting a single pixel at a random X position and, and a random Y position. And we're setting that pixel to white. Hmm. Hmm. Not quite what we wanted. What is happening here? Why doesn't this work? This should work, right? Let's think things through a little bit. This is something I see a lot of times happening with, with newcomers. Uh, this is this thing where you quite often forget that we are doing this thing in a draw function. This is a draw function, and in this function, we're calling the star field function, right? And as I already said, I know this, I sound like a broken record, but the draw function is being spammed 30 times per second. So this means also the star field function is spammed 30 times per, per second. So we're drawing the, the stars 30 times per second. And every time we draw a new set of 10 stars in this, in this loop, we are 
generating new positions for those stars. So they are always at a random position and a new random position. So that's why they're flickering because 30 times per second, we are putting them on different positions. We are rearranging the stars all the time. And that's why it looks like this crazy snow eff uh, effect. And now actually you can, you can actually play it around with it. We're going to have some fun here. We can go from one to hundred. You can have hundred stars. Whoa, <laughs> radical. <laughs> I mean, if you want to have the, it looks a little bit like a hyper hyperspace or maybe like a snowstorm, like more realistically, there's like a snowstorm. So if you ever want to, ever want to have a shmup uh, at Christmas shmup, maybe that might be a good idea. But yeah, it's a bit hectic though. Like it's, it's a real blizzard happening here. Uh, not what we want. So what are, how are we going to deal with this? Well, we want to draw stars. Uh, so we want to, we can't like randomize the position of the stars. We kind of have to keep track of the positions of the stars. Actually, we have to actually have variables for, for where the stars are. Mm. But that's a lot of variables. When you have 100 stars, that's a lot of variables. That's how are we going to do this? Well, <laughs> there is a solution for that. And that solution is tables. Okay, so let me introduce you to the idea of tables. Tables are, uh, is basically a different thing you can put in a variable. We had the, 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 the four kinds of things that can be in a variable, but there's more. Table is a way of combining multiple variables into one big variable, so to speak. And there's actually two different ways of we can do this, but we're gonna, for now, we're gonna have like this simple array kind of thing. So let's say I have a cup and then I have a bottle and both things can contain fluids and we're just gonna mush them together and put some duct tape around it. And that's basically, <laughs> that's basically what a table is. And you can add more, you can have so many more. You can have like a huge clump of cups. <laughs> a table, you know, that the word table kind of like already gives you, um, gives away how, how this can look. So let's just go with stars equals, and it's like one, four, eight, uh, nine, three, uh, seven, nine. Uh, we have a curly bracket we have a curly bracket opening and then a bunch of numbers and they're all comma separated and then the curly bracket closes. And this is a table. And this table has um, seven entries. Okay, so now all the seven entries are kind of like in a table and that table is then assigned to the stars variable. How can we do things with this? Can we print this? Let's see. Uh, let's go down here. I'm going to actually take this definition uh, and I'm going to put it here. I'm, I, uh, I cut it out and put it in here in the, in the draw function so we can see it work. Uh, also, I will actually comment out this piece of value so we don't see the snow anymore <laughs> because it's quite distracting. <laughs> okay, so we're going to assign uh, the table to the stars variable here in the draw function at the end of the draw function. And we're just going to print it on the screen and we're going to see what happens, okay? It's just printed. You can see it, it, it says, it just says table. So you cannot print stars. You cannot actually print the, the actual and table, but, but that's because of this entire table, right? Uh, we can access individual entries in within the table. Uh, and that's works like this. You do a square bracket after the name of the variable a square bracket after the name of the variable. And then inside the square bracket, you put a number that corresponds to the number of the table. So if I want to have the four, I want to print number four. That's going to be the second number in the table. One, two, three, four, and so forth. So the second entry in the table I want. So I'm going to put this two in the square bracket behind the name of the variable. And that allows us to access the second entry in the table. I'm gonna run this, you can see there's the four. If I want to have the third entry in the table, I will change to three and then, and that will print eight. If I want to have the final entry, I will pr put the seven in here. Nine, that's, that's, the, that's the last entry here, right? What if I put a number that is greater than the number of entries? Ah, it's going to be the dreaded nil. 
It does not exist. The entry does not exist. We get in there. Okay, okay. If what if I put zero in here? Oh, another nail. Okay, okay. So one, one, two, four, three, eight. Right? Maybe it's gonna be clearer if it's not numbers. Maybe we're gonna put, uh, we can put, we don't like, Tables don't have to consist of numbers. We can also put different types of variables in here. All the basic types work. So we can also put text in here. Spider-Man. Iron Man. No copyright inf infringement intended. <laughs> Let's just put the uh, put the event in here. Uh, Thor. Uh, let's put Hulk in here. Right. You can put all of these these Avengers in here. And what else? Uh, who else is an Avengers? I I forgot. Iron Widow is that is that an Avenger? There's a Widow, Black Widow. Okay. No, actually, I, I, what is what is the mm, Hawkeye? Let's put a hawk in here. Okay. So if you want to print stars, that these are my stars. <laughs> if you want to print the first entry, which is going to be Spider-Man, and we're going to print stars one, bam, there's Spider-Man. And we're going to print entry number two, bam, there's Iron Man. And then we're going to print number entry number three, bam, there's Thor. Something you can also do, and that's kind of really fun, you can add things and remove things from a table on the go while the program is running. You don't have to like define a table and just leave it there. You can change things, you can modify things, you can add and remove things. It's very, very flexible. So for example, uh, we can say something like, uh, let's say um, stars, uh, square brackets one, that's Spider-Man. Let's change it to something else. Let's just, um, I don't like Spider-Man. I want it to have be Spider-Gwen. I'm just assigning like a variable assignment. I'm assigning a value to a variable, but it's not a variable. It's, an, it's a table entry. It's the table stars and the entry number one in that table. And that's where we're going to put the uh, value spider Gwen. Is that, do you spell it with space or not? I don't know. And we're going to print uh, this first entry and there is spider Gwen changed to uh, a change from Spider-Man to Spider-Man to like to show you I'm gonna do it before we do it. So we first print the original version of it, then we change it, and then we print this, the, the change version. Spider-Man changed to Spider-Man. Perfect. Is that good? Is that is that fun? Well, <laughs> well, something you can do is you you see how you see how is it it's it's kind of weird right it's kind of weird how the number of the entry that we get from from a table how that is blue that's kind of like we said that this blue means that this could be also a variable so yes this is obviously a perfect application for a, a for next loop that's right uh, for example, let's say we have like this whole team, we have all these stars. Well, what if we want to print the names of our little team, <laughs> our little superhero team? What if we want to print them on a the screen? For example, it's an RPG and these are actually, it's a superhero RPG. And these are superheroes in our team, in our party. And we want to print all of the um, superheroes that are on, in your party. We can do that. We can do a 4i equals 1, 2. How many superheroes do we have? One. Uh, two, three, four, five. I think we have five. For one to five, do. It's the same thing here. We just start with the counter variable, starts at one, ends at five, do. Okay. And then we can do print stars square brackets i. Close square brackets, close parentheses. Uh, so we're using the counter variable to uh, print, you know, to go through the entire table of our superheroes and print their names on the screen one after another. Uh, let me remove this stuff so it's, it's a bit out of the way. Spider-Man, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, Hawkeye. Perfect.
right? You can mm -hmm. go through a list and 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 print them on the screen. Cool. Uh, there's more you can do. You can add new heroes. Uh, but before I show you this, is mm, I don't like how we had to count. <laughs> you know, can you, we had to count ourselves how many entries there are in the table, uh, in a list. And then this is also something called. There's different names for this. Um, table, list, or array. Uh, array is how I learned this. This is this is to me an array. Um, I think table is kind of like the Lua name. List is I think something that makes sense like in an English language. But yeah. Um, right. So I don't like how we have to count it because like what if this is there's a lot more heroes in there. Like it, it would be good to automate this to make you know Pico eight do the counting for us so we don't have to deal with this and we can't do this. Um, it's it's you, you type in stars and you put a hashtag in front of it. <laughs> hashtag stars. <laughs> uh, so you basically take the variable where the, where the uh, list is in and then you put a hashtag in front and that uh, re returns the n number of entries in, in a list. So in this case, it will return a five. But if we change if the number of uh, uh, entries changes, it, it will reflect that. So now you can see it. nothing changes the same thing, but uh, but now but now the loop kind of um, automatically finds out how many times it has to loop in order to print all of the names in the list. Okay, so I wanted to show you how to add new elements to the list. Uh, one very simple way of of doing this is just going stars. We know that there's five people, so we can just like say stars six equals what is a superhero now? Okay, it's your turn, Black Widow. No copyright intended, Disney, don't, don't sue me. Um, so you can just take a slot that's not taken yet. And we can just assign some value and that will automatically instance the, the list. So there, there's Black Widow. And because our for next loop actually automatically uh, finds you know the length of the list, it automatically extends, it automatically loops more. So we can also have Black Widow on the screen. So it knows automatically, ah, this is now six entries. Cool, good. Uh, so this is one way of doing this. Um, another way of doing this is you can use the add statement. And that's actually, to me, the preferable. So you go add, that's a function, not, not a statement. So add open parentheses stars, that's the variable that contains the list. And then what you want to add. Star Lord. Bam, Star Lord has been added to the list. I think this is the, the, the easiest one, just adding things to the list. You can also delete things from a list. Now, Star Lord didn't exist in the, in the list in this version. Like, there's no Star Lord, right? So we, it didn't do anything. There is no Star Lord. But for example, if you want to kick out Spider Man, poor Spider Man, you can go um, so delete from this list the entry Spider Man, and then Spider Man disappears. And then all of the other uh, entries move in to, to, to cover this part. There's some automation happening in the background. You know, things are being moved around, so there's uh, usually it doesn't want to have gaps in the list. Okay, so that's generally how lists work. And now we're going to apply them to draw beautiful stars on the screen. How are we going to do this? Well, um, we are going to actually have to have two lists because we're going to create a bunch of variables. We're going to create a list of stars, right? But the problem is like each star has an X and a Y position. So we're going to have two lists, one list for the X position, one list for the Y position. Okay. Good. Uh, I'm going to delete this. Hopefully you'll be okay with that. <laughs> you want to you can keep it around if you want it like a reference, right? Okay, so in here I'm just gonna go with star x equals, and I'm just gonna put some values in here. Three values. I'm gonna go star y equals, and I'm gonna put another some some more values in here. Uh, 50, uh, 50, 55. 45, 78, something like this. Okay, two um, 
two arrays, two lists. One list takes care of the X position, uh, another list takes care of the Y position. Okay, and now here in our, our star field, you, you see kind of see where this is going, right? <clears throat> Instead of randomizing the position, we take the position from the two uh, arrays. So we're gonna go star X, I, and star Y, square brackets, yeah, I forgot to mention it. square brackets I, I. So we're gonna use the same trick that we used before, where we're using this counter variable for the loop to iterate through the list. And this is something that you will see all the time, iterating through a table. Iter you have a table of data and we're going through all of the data and we're printing it on the screen or we're changing it or something like this, something that you can see all the time. So this is gonna be the first glimpse of how this works. So yeah, uh, one problem though, we don't have 100 stars right now, we have three stars, right? And there's one, two, three entries in each of the, those two uh, lists. Um, so we can do three for now. Let's try this. Bam! There they are. There are three stars. Nice. Um, let's automate this. Let's make this hashtag star X. Now we're, we're now getting the number of entries in star X. We just want to make sure that star X has the same number of entries in star Y. Otherwise, we're going to get a bit of a trouble. But yeah, um, it's fine. It's going to be fine. Okay, so now again, three stars. That's good. That's good. Uh, but we want to maybe have more stars. We have to automate the creation of stars. I mean, we could, we, we could put R&D 128, right? I can put it three times in here. Oh man, yes, yes, yes. Putting three times R&D 128 in here. And then now the stars are randomized, but it's just three stars. And I want to have maybe like, I don't know, 100 stars, and that's going to be a lot of copy and paste, <laughs> right? Um, so yeah, again, Again, we're, gonna, we're just gonna do it for next loop. You see how useful this is? For i equals one, two hundred, do. Uh, we're gonna copy the creation of the list and we're gonna create empty lists. We're gonna put nothing in those lists, no stars. But then we're gonna have a loop that loops hundred times and we're gonna go add, right? You remember, you can add something to a list star x comma r and d 128 Bam. and then we're going to do the same thing with star y adding a random number to our star list let's 100 is maybe too much let's go 10 let's 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 ease off those bricks perfect ah beautiful 100 can we have 100 stars sure no problem. Easy peasy for breeze. Nice. Really, really nice. Okay. Okay. Um, something we forgot. Uh, I forgot to do the floor. You will see it actually doesn't make much difference. Like visually doesn't make much difference. It will make the difference later when we're going to animate because they are not animated re re yet, right? Oh no, we have to animate them too. Ugh. Beautiful, beautiful Starfield. I love it so much. Mm, 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 mm. All right. And actually, this is going to be end, the end of it. This is going to be uh, the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. So, yeah, we're ending a bit prematurely here because there's a very obvious next step. And I want you to try this step yourself you can if you can figure this out, because I think this is going to be a really nice uh, aha effect. If you have never done this before, I think this will, this will be a lot of fun. So the, the, the task, your task, should you accept, is uh, to, I mean, we have a star-filled sky. It would be kind of nice if uh, those stars were moving. Yeah, right? That's the idea that we are flying past the stars. So can you make the stars move? That's the first task. If you can't make the stars move, that's okay. But can you maybe, for example, uh, make the stars have different colors? Can you figure out how you can make the stars have different colors? That would be a different task. 
these are two challenges for me. I want you to try out uh, interacting with those uh, entries, this, those, those lists, to try to get a handle on those. I think this is going to be a very, very useful tool in the future. We'll see a lot. And I want you to have some first hand experience with this. Don't worry. We're going to actually, on the next episode, we're going to actually do it ourselves. But I want you to give it a try. I think you can pull it off. All right. And this is also the moment where I will, as always, Give a big shout out to the coffee crew that made this video possible. That's right. This video series has been made possible through the generous support of my supporters on coffee. Thank you so much for your support. And if you aren't a supporter yet, consider a sub or a one-time donation over at coffee. One of the major perks is that you'll gain access to new episodes of this series earlier, so there is no need to wait. And there's also all sorts of other behind the scenes features. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazy devs. Mm-hmm, yeah, that's right. Okay, good. So on the next episode, we are going to finish up this, uh, the Starfield sky, the Starfield simulation. We're gonna have beautiful stars that scroll past at different speeds, different colors, it's gonna be awesome. Um, and then maybe if we have time, we're gonna move over to, um, we, we're gonna start organizing our code a little bit. We already started. Uh, we're having like a, a dedicated function here, but we're gonna, expand our abilities to organize the code. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.